Hello and welcome to this video series of the skateboard optimization tutorial and in this case we are looking at the sizing optimization. So we did a free sizing optimization earlier and sizing optimization is all about making the results more discrete. So as we have here very continuous thickness changes we, may, we want to make that more discrete to make it more manufacturable and the sizing optimization. To start this process we start with a clean uh, hypermesh desktop to import the generated fem file <clears throat> which has all um, all which serves as a foundation for for the process later um, it, it helps you, you could define that from scratch but this file helps a lot to make this transition from free size to size easier you will see why in a minute so we import a solver deck by pressing file import solver deck and I select it already but you go here skateboard free sizing underscore sizing there has to be a file with underscore sizing if there's no file like that you have to go back and look if your output uh, if you have an output control card specified with fs toss and and yes on the frequency but if it's there import it and you will see in the model explorer that you have a bunch more plies uh, so you have your laminate and you see oh a bunch more plies not five but 20. and you have lots of different thicknesses and the first thing you want to do is to go through each ply and at the and, and change the, the maximum thicknesses and to be a manufacturable thickness not a continuous value. So you have um, the plies here. If you go through the plies, you can see the thickness, but more important is design variables. For each ply, you have a sizing design variable created automatically. And that's that's what, what simplifies the process. Because if you would start from scratch, you would have to define each variable manually. And maybe you have 100, 200 plies someday, then it's a, uh, Big, bigger process but you have those design variables and if you see here you have a lower and the upper bound and the first thing you want to do is you change the upper bound to be a manufacturable um, thickness yeah you, you could you could look at the plies if you just make um, use of the hiding tool so you can look at each ply and see what ply shape you have like that and yeah now we go to the auto ply and in this case we our plies are not yet named auto ply but that doesn't matter we go to the optimization panel and go to the size panel and now we can look each each um, design variable we will change the upper bond to the next higher um, to the next higher uh, number for example here it's 1.2 we change it to 2 and press update now we're going to the next and it is 0 0.3 so we say it's 0 0.5 update like that and do that manually <clears throat> next one 0 0.7 is 1 and maybe I can do that even a little bit better if I go here. Yeah, I think that's better. Now I'm on the fourth. Okay, change that here to 0 0.5. Change that to 1.5, I guess. No, to 1. All right. Change that to 0 0.5. to 1, 0 0.5, okay, it's pretty much the same for everything here, to 1, to 0 0.5, to 1, should be, um, excuse me, 
Should be the eleventh ply yet one. I'm not getting it. The twelfth ply is also to one. No. Zero point five. That's one. Zero point five. That will be one. That would be zero point five. That would be maybe two. That would be zero point five and one and zero point five. Okay, now the upper bounds are set, more or less, and we also want to specify a T manufacturable in each ply, and that means now uh, that's because you can't buy the plies in each thickness you want. So just as the software says, you want to have to apply with thickness 0 0.3170. And um, it's not, it doesn't mean that it's available on the market. So you can specify for the plies, you can specify the T manufacturable. So you can say that each ply, no matter what is 0 0.5 and if you have um, a layer thickness of 2 then it means it's 4 plies of 0 0.5 okay now that's a T manufacturable and we have to change the keyboard for the output control card because now we are doing a sizing optimization and we want to like like from free sizing to sizing there's the automated generation of that FEM file. It's also the same for the sizing to shuffling optimization, which is the next stage. So we change the control card up, output, change that from FS TOS to SZ TOS. Okay, sizing to shuffling. All right, so that's about it. Now we can run the optimization and we will name that we will name that sizing. Uh, that's maybe not a good idea. Sizing not dot five but just sizing because the sizing dot five was the automatically generated file, so it's um, sizing and default is okay and run it and yeah we will expect the mass to increase because through that manufacturable constraint we will um, make the plies which have 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 bigger to be 0 0.5 so that's that's where the mass com comes from and yeah, we'll see that in a minute. But the um, great advantage of this optimization is that you have now discrete plies, which you can manufacture too. So as before, we have the element thickness. Uh, we may have the ply thicknesses and go to the ply zero, for example. Ah, okay. It is all one element, uh, one millimeter. Okay, can I switch that through? Okay, I can see that's much more discrete. It just has one value for for the for the whole ply, and that's that's a great advantage. Now you can you can imagine that you can manufacture this because it's all the same same size. All right, um, that's about it for the sizing optimization. And, and you also could look at the structural analysis results for the sizing optimization, but we'll skip that and um, save it for the output of the ply bundle stacking optimization or the shuffling optimization. And as always, thanks for watching. If you have a comment, a question, or something to, uh, to, to say, just put it below the video 
Um, if you like what, what I did here, um, just give me maybe a thumbs up or subscribe. I would be very happy about it. And thanks for watching again and goodbye.